right. Well, there it is. The shortest intro of all. We are here on Talking Jets. Why is it not starting on? There it is. Making me nervous. Okay, making me nervous. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is Armchair GM. I am Green Bean. And that fella to my right is none other than the great Tigo. We'd like to say how you doing tonight, man. Uh, it's so good to see the Jets, um, you know, doing some stuff. So we're going to talk about all of that tonight. Tigo and I have a few areas where we might see things differently. We also happen to agree on a few things this week. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, first off, Tigo, how are you doing tonight, buddy? You okay? I'm doing well. I am sick. <clears throat> yeah. So there is that. But outside <laughs> of that, I'm doing pretty good. Today was a positive day uh, really? in terms of Jets free agency. It was. It was a big one because we saw something that, like, in, in the air, like, we can sign defensive tackles. You can bring over a cornerback. It's like, okay, okay, backup quarterback, very important. But we all know what we wanted to see. Where's the sexy yeah. positions? Where it? Where is it? Where's our tackles? Where's our O line? Where's our receivers? And we got some of that today, and that's exciting. Uh, plus, we saw the return of somebody that, uh, quite frankly, ninety nine point seven percent of all Jets fans wanted back in the worst way, and that's our punter Morstead. So we now have the band back together. Zerline and Morstead each got two year uh, contract. Does Zerline got a two year as well? Right. Think I thought Zerline was three. There you go. I'll take Whatever. that too. They're both back and for some time. Right. And I'm saying, right. I didn't want to see another couple one year contracts. Like just nope. get, dude, they're they, it works. Lock them up. Not playing it. so scared, you know. Uh E Boogie's in the house, T Go. He started us off tonight. He said, let's go. 20 and 0. All right. Well, hey, I'm there with that. Look, E Boogie beat Dakota tonight. That's important. That's a that's a E Boogie. I'm proud of you, friend. Well done. That, well 307 he got here but look at that he only beat dakota by one minute everybody dakota was here at 308 e boogie slipped in at 307 uh the rusty spooner following him up about an hour later uh what's up green bean grain green fam tigo was wrong about abt being our right tackle never said right tackle. thank um well i'll tell you what um i said tackle tackle there's still, so did there's I. still a job left Remember what I said, everybody, and I and I sincerely hope this is not the case. But I said I have a sneaking suspicion ABT is penciled in at tackle, and I said brace yourselves. I would not be surprised if it's left tackle. So uh, right tackle off the board. Uh, Rusty just wants to yell at you, which is good. You oh, have yeah. a, you they have should. a, you, have, you should. I had been saying from for a while now that I had him penciled in at right tackle because I didn't like the right tackle market because like who who thought morgan moses was available nobody you know especially when they have him for 5.5 million tigo yep you know what i mean you got a starting right tackle and we'll look at his numbers and we'll break some stuff we'll break into a few tidbits on morgan moses in a little while but yeah he wasn't on the market tigo exactly so joe douglas made his own market which is nice rusty we're glad you're here my friend uh tony alexio another great man uh the green bean mania fixed his tigonomics <laughs> uh, I, I i couldn't love tony's little um idioms more man yeah uh, you're, you're such a such a fun guy to have around there he is hepburn my uh, coney island cyclone buddy himself green bean tigo armchair madness or tiego look at that i like that tiego that's, that's that's pretty good that's a good spin on it uh there's dakota nicks here so excited to see everyone with egg on their face after making jokes about JD when I knew he'd figure something out. Hey, man, you can't blame Jets fans, Nick. You can't blame Jets fans for being traumatized. That's it. We all handle trauma differently. You know what I mean? Yep. Some people uh, get, get a little nervous, and that's okay. That's okay. Aaron Gertz is here. What's up, Aaron? Uh, Craig's here. Look at Craig. He's hanging out. We can get Smith. Dude, if we get Tyron Smith, I feel pretty damn good heading into this draft. Even that alone. Even, even if we don't add a wide receiver, which I think we will, whether it's number two or it's just somebody more fourth wide receiver type, no matter what, I would feel pretty damn good heading into the draft. And we'll talk about some of the themes 
uh, that are happening out there, Tigo, because uh, oh, as soon as we signed Morgan Moses, everybody's like, it's proof. I'm like, wow, that didn't take long. Holy shit, that was Yeah, quick. people turned and turned fast. Fast. Like, right it was, they didn't push. even wait for the, like, the tweet. They hadn't even hit send on the tweet yet. And people were already like, Bowers at 10. I was like, okay, <laughs> damn. It is, it is true. We are, we're a funny bunch of people. That's when you realize that that's what we really are, is just a funny bunch. It gets a lot easier around here. It, it does. You go, oh, okay, we're just an idiosyncratic bunch of crazies. Like that's, that, 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 that's what we are. Um, now, let me remind you guys of a couple things. We got 350 people in here. Uh, yeah, 350. I'm, dude, I'll tell you, man. The the Twitter thing has been going nuts. We got 160 on Twitter. So if you're hanging out with us on Twitter, uh, please give us a follow if you wouldn't mind. That would be great. And if you're here for YouTube, go ahead and smash that like button. Give us the old milk thumbs. That would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Talking Jets channel. We are a growing channel, still under 6,000 subscribers. Uh, we'd love to get that up. And let YouTube know that we are, in fact, here to stay. Uh, we can only do that with your help, so it's greatly appreciated. I want to remind you of one thing real fast. Guys, we are coming up to Farmingdale, Long Island, for the first round of the of mock, of, of the NFL draft. Uh, Matt O'Leary, Ryan, myself, a few other special guests, uh, and, and sad to say, Jeremy, uh, will be there as well. Tigo can't make it. I don't think he can make it, right, Tigo? Unfortunately, yeah, Tigo no, can't make it. Uh, Dom C can't make it. But uh, there's going to be a lot of friendly faces in there. We have crowd cams, three hours of open bar, three hours of buffet, uh, lots of, of, of just killer giveaways, and you get a solid hang with us. Uh, we'll be live streaming it as well for all those folks who can't make it. But, man, if you can, the tickets are available in the description. TalkingJets.com. Just click that link and come and join us. Uh, we'll have a great time. So uh, let me say, Jay's here. Big Green's in the house. Look at all these guys. And Jets is back. This is great. I want to get to this super chat from Gator Needs His Gat. I wonder how involved Woody is in deciding contract length with JD potentially on the hot seat. Likely slows us down compared to other teams. I mean, look, Joe Douglas is not the first guy to 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 be on the hot seat, you know. Um, if Woody's smart at all, you have to act as if you cannot you cannot limit, you know. It's like you better succeed or else. But no, you can't have money, you can't control the contract lengths, and you better not use any picks uh, from the you, like you can't hamstring a guy and tie his career to it. So. In my opinion, you got to let him roll. You, you got to let him run the team and do what he's going to do. This looks very much like a Joe Douglas offseason to me, guys. Yep. It doesn't look any different than what we've seen. So I don't really have any concern. Tigo, what do you think about that? You think Woody's yep. uh, controlling the, you know, pulling the strings, saying Joe Douglas only one year, two year contract kind of a thing? No, I think you said it perfectly. This is. If anybody anticipated anything different from Joe Douglas, that was them setting themselves up for disappointment. This is the type of offseason that Joe Douglas was going to have. Because I think as a GM, you also can't operate on the I'm on the hot seat. Yeah. Kind of, you know, you need to know that you're on the hot seat. The owner needs to know that you know that you're on the hot seat. But you go about it business as usual because – you get into a problem of like you can sell, you can create a problem for the future. You like a year down the road, if we traded everything away, you know, and then it works out and it's just, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, I agree. You just, I mean, you can't do that. You just can't not to say that some assholes aren't out there. And uh, I mean, Woody, I still don't know if he's a good owner or not. I mean, he's, he's very, uh, willing to pay whatever money that any GM he's had has asked for. We've set the market numerous times with contracts for free agents. So it's not like he's afraid to spend, but mm -hmm. man, he is the only variable that remains consistent other than the four years that his, his son, I can't, uh, I call that's the third time I've done that. His yeah. little brother, his brother <laughs> was there, uh, but he, they're the constant is the Johnsons. So I, I don't know, man. Um, 
I just don't know, and I don't like the Woody necklace. Let me just make that clear. Uh, Matt O'Leary's in the house. He's going to be in Farmingdale with bells on. You know why he's going to be so happy? Not only does he get to hang with the boys, he also lives five seconds away. He can walk there. So that's that's pretty damn good jam right there from Mr. O'Leary. Just to put your shoes on, your flip-flops, and stroll on over. Not too bad. And good for Matt. Who, do, who, do, who deserves it more than Matt O'Leary, man? Uh, so Harry's in the house. Dano's here. Nightbot's here. Welcome, Nightbot. It's good to see you. Modine is here, and we'll do this, and then we're going to break into our first subject of the night. Blitz crew checking in, Tigo. He says, sub to talking jets with Tigo. Right. Did I not say that? Thank you, Blitz crew. Do not forget to support our man, Tigo, on his channel. The link is in the description of the video, as always. You can very quickly just click that, give him a sub, come right back, and you've done your good deed for the day. Uh, again, that's it's, it's the only way we grow, guys, and we uh, we just appreciate you so much, uh, and we love hanging with you. So, uh, Oh, and Green Bean, too. You can go over to Green Bean and do that same thing. Excited on our next move. Think we will get a left tackle or wide receiver or both in free agency. Dude, the truth is, uh, Matt O'Leary says it's 25 minutes. <laughs> That's still pretty good, man. Still, I'm driving, what is it, uh, seven hours. Uh, so not bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, getting back uh, to Blitz Crew. You know, the truth is, is it's day one of free agency, everybody. Really? Yeah. You know? So we've done a lot of good work uh, so far. And, and speaking of good work, let's get right into it for Blitz Crew here. Uh, the first thing is... What did you? I want to talk to you a little bit about our new guard, Jonathan Simpson. Um, now let me shoot real straight with everybody here. Uh, we wanted a guard, I, I wanted our first signing, uh, to be an offensive lineman. I didn't care if it was interior or tackle, but I wanted someone right away. I wanted to make that statement. I, I hoped it was Tyron Smith or, or Robert Hunt or one of those guys, but we got Jonathan Simpson and everybody. In Jets land went, who? That's what a lot of you know people did. That's the truth of the matter. Now, I knew who he was, but I'll admit, <laughs> I didn't do any real study. I don't know. I don't know who he is, you know? So the first thing everybody does, you go over to PFF, <laughs> right? That's what everybody does. Yep. Uh, and you look and you go, ooh, he's like just, he's a, he's a tick and a half better than the guy we just cut. So everybody gets nervous. He's a penalty machine, 11 penalties. Uh, uh, just for conversation's sake, Makai Becton, who we all complained about last year, had 12. So we bring in a guy. Who, we get rid of Becton and Lake and Tomlinson. We bring in a guy in case we were missing those penalties we're getting, brought, that brought in 11 penalties last year. So people get concerned. Now, uh, there was that video that came out with Chris Long talking about his tenacity. Admittedly, that made me feel a little bit better, right? So you start mm -hmm. looking at stuff. Um and uh, you go, okay, well, he's tenacious, and he's got that attitude. He's got that physical component, which you're like, okay, great. So penalties are bad. He only gave up one sack last year, which is good compared to Lake and Tomlinson. If I remember correctly, I think he had seven uh, sacks that he gave up last year. So there's an improvement there. So you get a tenacious guy, physical, not giving up sacks. So you start to paint this positive picture, but still a little bit lackluster, you know? A solid, okay, average starter. But Tigo, I want to under I, I I really want to understand your side of it. Do you see this any differently than the way the you know the picture I'm painting here? Kind of a middling, uh, all right, you got something done, but nothing really overly exciting. How do you feel about the Jonathan uh Simpson signing? Or sorry, wait, Smith, isn't it? No, How it's John Simpson. About? All right, Jonathan Simpson. Good. I'm glad I did that right then. All right. It I was with you. 100% of the way. When we signed him, I did the first thing I always do is I went to PFF just to see what the grades are and just to see, you know, what's going on there. And then I looked at the in-depth stats and I was like, oh, look at that. The, the, the stats paint the picture of a player that should be graded higher. So what's going on here? And then you see, oh, the 11 penalties and, and different things like that. And then I started doing a, a, a dive into his game film. And I started watching back the Baltimore Ravens games. And I started watching uh, like him, obviously specifically to see what was going on. And I was, I walked away much, much more confident in this signing than I did when it happened. 
because when it happened, I had John Simpson as a, as a, like, there was this tier one of guys, you know, you're like your Robert Hunt and stuff like that. Then you had your tier two of guys. And I had him in this not really even worth looking at tier three of guys. Right. And then that was the issue is I was like, why did we go straight to the tier three? And I think that when we look back, what you're going to see is that this signing could be the one that we look back at and go, wow, how did we get him for that much money? It kind of doesn't make all that much sense because I think he, dude, I think he's incredibly good. He's got his faults. Like, don't get me wrong. He's not this perfect uh, guard or by any stretch of the imaginations. He likes to put his weight over his toes sometimes and keep his hands out wide a little bit too much. And I saw that, yeah. You know, doing the, the certain things and, you know, he, he likes to like stand still sometimes. Like he doesn't like keep his feet engaged in the block and certain things. Like it's not perfect. But when you're asking for a guy who's explosive when it comes to pulling guards, he is that. When you're talking about with just just pure strength and power and an excellent anchor, he's got that. When you're talking about a guy who understands the assignment of a guard, so dude, I don't think I've ever seen a guy who picks up on the stunt every single time. That's what he's done. He's so good at recognizing the stunt and just overall awareness in pass protection. And I think the biggest thing is that the dude always is trying to find some work. Right. Which he, is he just, the, I do, which is one of my favorite traits of offensive linemen. Yeah. Looking like, for work. Yeah. He's just, he's looking to kill somebody every rep. And it leads to some stupid penalties. There's one egregious one where he just basically tackles a linebacker in the open field, like arms around him, just tries to tackle this linebacker in the open field. And it's just like, that's not great. But when you're talking about a young guard with upside, this is a great signing, in my opinion, and made me feel a little bit more comfortable in him as our starting left guard. Because, again, I'm only seven games in. I, I still have to watch the back half of the season to see if it holds up. And I'm going back because I want to watch Morgan Moses because I wasn't looking at Morgan Moses when I was doing it. But, yeah. So you like him? Yeah, I like him. <laughs> well, and like Tigo said, looking for work is one of those traits, man, that that it's it's crazy to think about, but not every offensive lineman has that trait. They'll just kind of sit back, you know? And, the, you know, we saw it last year. There was a guy that we liked a lot coming in. That was um, Avila, right? Yeah. Avila, we didn't know if he'd play center or guard. But uh, let me tell you, I think he what he's the Rams, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, he's a center now. And dude, the the highlights of this of of that young kid, like he would just be out there, like his guy. You know, they do a stunt or whatever. He's left alone. What does he do? He looks to his left, to his left tackle, and he goes and crushes the edge rush. Like that's what you want to do. Let them know, man, that you are going to get roughed up playing against us today and that's the important thing setting the tone it's all about the physicality yes there's speed and all this but when you can out physical somebody by the third fourth quarter that's when you start to roll you've beaten them and uh and uh and simpson brings that uh i i put a poll out there for you guys i want to see what letter grade you're given for the Jonathan Simpson signing? Again, uh, we're, we're well aware that he was not one of the guys that my, many of us, if any, were talking about. Uh, we had lots Zeitler and, uh, and, and Runyon and, and, uh, and, you know, and Hunt and everybody. But we got ourselves a, a, a left guard, which, you know, we're watching to see where ABT, everything that comes, we're like, all right, where does that move AD, a, ABT to? So the left guard idea is out when we signed Simpson. Now we got Moses. The right tackle thing is out with with so now we got left tackle and right guard left for for ABT. So it's an interesting thing. So right now, most of you guys think this is a B signing, which is not bad. Not bad. There's a I think Modine's crew is uh, down there by the F, three um, percent right now. I'll leave it up there for a few more minutes. Um, 
but I think overall, man, you got to commend Joe Douglas for making sure, like if the market was crazy and, and we saw that it was, you know, Robert Hunt's contract was, was way more than, than I thought that he was going to get uh, five years. What he got 20 million per 20, uh, just cr crazy numbers, dude. So if seeing that the market's that way, who knows? Maybe that was his guy too. And his agent goes, ah, we're looking at 19 million right now. He's like, all right, see you later. And he goes, where's that Simpson guy? Let's call him and see where he is. Uh, we did okay. What was his contract? Two years, 18, I think it was, right? Uh, so 9 million yeah. per, perfect. Uh, that's lower kinda, than that. Yeah, let me I think see. Up to 18. I think it's, I think he's a 6 million per. No, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. It is nine. It's it's nine. Because we saved nine, nine. and then signed him for nine. There it is. Um, yep, yeah, yeah. Two years, 18 million. So nine million a year, right in the pocket, man. Now, maybe you'd think that him in particular might be a seven million guy, but hey, I was totally okay with the Jets paying a little bit more than maybe they needed to, or than that than you would think they had to because of our situation. Now, here's the best news about Jonathan Simpson. So He's got some raw, you know, uh, aspects of him. Tico talked about his balance and his, his, you know, his hand placement, things like that. The best news in the world is our offensive line coach is beloved and highly thought of, uh, Tico. And everybody uh, respects him through the roof. And I have no concerns about Keith Carter's ability to straighten those the, those uh, intricacies out uh, with our with our new lineman. But uh, let me end the poll. See where we sit. And, uh, all right. Well, B took it to go 58% of Jets fans in the, uh, in the chat, 156 people what voted. I voted for. Uh, you gave him a B. Okay, good. B. Nice. Nice. Uh, 28% of you thought it was a C move. 9% loved it. Gave it an A rating and 3% hung around down there at the bottom, uh, in the F range. But I think by and large, I think, you know, it looks like Jets fans are, are pretty happy with the move. Uh, Dick Chimney's burner checking in. Thank you uh, for being a, a Talking Jets only fan member, Dick Chimney's burner. Uh, this is your 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 monthly super chat that you get as a member. Uh, it's hard to get excited about the free agent lineman when we still have Keith Carter leading. Ah, there it is. I'm sorry I didn't read this before my little joke there, Dick Chimney's burner. But, uh, you know, look. He is an, uh, he's been in the NFL for, for years. He's an offensive line coach. Now, he might not be the best, but I don't know. I mean, I, how do you feel I think about he, I think people are overblowing the whole Keith yeah. Carter thing. I think people are looking at some emoji tweets from Brees Hall and trying to put their own thing on a guy that they already didn't like, right? We have no idea what those things mean. Like, Brees tweeted yesterday something and people were blowing it up. Oh my God, Brees is mad at the Jets and he's going to want to leave. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm just bored. Like relax, you know, it's Twitter. There's, yeah. Like it's Twitter, like calm down. <laughs> and then the two guys that vehemently came out against him was the one guy who blames the New York Jets and has been blaming and has been subtweeting the Jets, you know, since year two, since the injury, since he's been here in, Makai Becton, who like, again, he did not leave on the best of terms. And then the other one is, oh, okay, let's talk about the guy who who's kind of a diva in Taylor Lewan, who you can tell he doesn't like being coached hard. He's laid back. He just wants to chill and hang out like, and dude, that's fine. And when you get a guy like Keith Carter, who coaches hard, it, you're going to rub some people the wrong way. But to sit here and say, oh, he's going to stop us from getting free agents or, oh, my gosh, this. And people are going to – people hate Keith Carter. I'm like, dude, he, he had 13 different offensive linemen. In Tennessee, when he was there, he helped manufacture as the run game coordinator and as the offensive line coach, top 10 offensive lines in continuous years and top five run games when he was there. I'm not trying to say that he's, oh, my God, he's this best offensive line coach. No. But can we relax with the he's going to stop players from wanting to come to the Jets? Dude, it was one year and everyone got hurt. And when he asked for help in the blocking scheme, Nathaniel Hackett didn't give him any help. He literally mm. asked Hackett for help. Hey, Dwayne Brown can't hack it. We don't have anyone else to play. Can you chip the guy, please? It's 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 that's Micah Parsons. Can we chip Micah Parsons once? And he didn't he said, do it. No. And he's he like, said, hey. And 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 uh, can we get somebody over there not named Uzoma to be the help 
Uh, can we maybe get this young buck Ruckert over there? Yeah, uh, he seems to be leveling Raiders. people. Yeah, right. I mean, Uzoma got schooled that game. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, right. I think it's overblown as well. But I mean, it's not. You'd much rather have a Callahan or or any of these guys that that have been well respected. But uh, it's I, I I do agree that it's overblown. But so Dick Chimney's burner. I think we're okay. We're we're not in as bad of a uh, a situation as maybe it looks. Uh, Gall Ager checking in. What's up, buddy? Got to remember with Lamar running, we'll draw holds. Now, Nanya actually did a thing. Gall, I I I immediately thought the same thing because that does create that those situations where the block that you the, you're engaged. But you you know you think your quarterback's in the pocket. Next thing you know, he's to your left, and and you have to you know think immediately end up pulling on the guy's jersey, and there it is. It's a hold. There was a lot less of that than you'd hope. Yeah. Uh, with you know, so it, it's not that it didn't happen, but it really wasn't. There was one uh, penalty where, boy oh boy, um, he just took this guy by his neck and, just and tried to tackle him in the open field. Yeah, dude. I, you know. You know what, though? It's an interesting thing because doing that once a game, letting the guy know, like, I'm here to hurt your fucking feelings, man. Like, that's <laughs> not the worst thing in the world. Like, I, I've, I've said that for many years. Like, if my offensive linemen are going to get penalties, I'd much rather it be a roughing penalty, like, you know, something or, or like a, like a, you know, a very violent hold as opposed to pre-snap. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're, it's that, that thought process. They're, they're, they're jumping. Like I always hate offside penalties. They they bother me the most. Even though they're only five yards, they bother me the most. They're indicative of uh, of a lack of discipline or uh, you know thinking, all those kinds of things. Yep. So I always hate that. But mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, hey, look, he's got to get the penalties down. But if he if he throws one out there a game just to let somebody know I uh, I'm gonna be hurting you all game, then I I'll I'll live and die with that one. Uh, I don't mind so much. I think uh, we're we gonna see a lot of him pulling out into space more. That's something that Keith Carter liked to do when he was in speak of the devil, right? It's something that he liked to do when he was in Tennessee, which is just sending the offensive lineman flying. So I think that there are ways to put him in positions where he's not going to be like a holding machine. And when you look at his protection, like how he can hold up in the pass pro, you think he was like, uh, I think Dick chimney was the one who tweeted this said that he was like ranked fifth or sixth when it came to time to protection amongst all guards in the NFL last year. So again, there's a lot of upside there and I, I'll take a penalty or two because he's trying to just close line a linebacker for no reason. Yeah. Sometimes I you just got to let a mofo know. That's right. Like, this you is, let this is my out. field. This is my field. That's right. And, uh, and I happen to dislike you on a personal level. So yeah, that's yeah. where we're going to be today. <laughs> you did, did you ever watch the, uh, the movie, the program Tigo? Do you remember that movie with James Conn? It was, it was a little bit before your time, but it was like one of the best football movies ever. You, do you remember that? I am going to have to look it up to see if I, you got to watch that. it. It's a, it's a really high quality movie, dude, about like the uh, yes. struggle of kids coming out of college and the, and the challenges they face and, the you know taking steroids and all those kinds of things, but there's this one linebacker. Every game he would like you know he'd pick a you know he'd he'd look at the lineman and see the guy a little bit of stars in his eyes and he'd be like, hey, you're that guy, you're that guy that messed with my mother. I know you. Yeah. And he would just terrorize like one guy the whole game. And it was one funny. There's there's one scene the guy goes, come on man, you know I don't know your mama. <laughs> Oh, it's such a good thing. But that's the that's the tone, man. Let them know we're here for violence. It's that this making not a, a nice sport. It's that it's that uh, like Michael Jordan thing where if he didn't, if the other team didn't have something that they were saying about him, he would just make it up. Like he would just yeah. make up. Somebody said something about his mama, or oh, he didn't make his height. Like they, he would just make something up, and that's the type of guy that seems like he just kind of makes something up. Oh, this interior defensive lineman said something about my sister, and it's just right. like I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. That's right. Remember, it's uh, the uh, Bobby Boucher method, you know, Gatorade, <laughs> that whole thing. That's the guy. That's the guy who told water sucks. You know, uh, James Alba checking in. Tigo, he says Simpson is everything we hoped Vlad Ducas and Coletio <laughs> Semele would be. 
excited for his physicality in the run game. I got to mm-hmm. say, uh, no, first of all, Vlad Dukas, uh, James, I hated that pick, and I hated our immediate cutting of Adam, um, Adam of Alan Fanica. Soon as we signed him, I mean, as soon as we drafted, um, we overdrafted uh, Vlad Dukas in the second round. We went and cut a a future Hall of Fame left guard in Alan Fanica. I never liked that pick, but you're right. The the hope was that this massive man and his physicality are going to develop into a, a a great offensive lineman. Now he did end up carving out a nice career for himself. He stayed in the NFL for like eight nine years. Uh, but not with the Jets. Now, Coletio Semele, I was really disappointed by because that guy, when he's on his game, he is as physical as it gets. Oh, yeah. And he came here and he started pulling all this shit. I need to have surgery. The Jets doctor's like, he doesn't need surgery, man. I don't know what he's talking about. And Joe Douglas had to cut him. And then he was on his dead cap for two years because McCagden sucks. And uh, what a disappointment that was. Yeah. Um, I was really excited about Coletio Semele. I thought that was I a great admit, opportunity. So was I. Yeah, I was really excited by uh, for him too, and what a what a flop that one was. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Crossfire checking in. What's up, buddy? Uh, Crossfire right now is sitting solo in the green in the Bean Baggers Zoom room, which we meet at nine o'clock on Wednesdays, uh, doing a little position. We're gonna do a little uh, mock draft uh, tonight, but uh, he's sitting. He already opened the room. He's just sitting in there solo style, waiting for everybody to come in. If you're a bean bigger and you want to go jump in there, go ahead, jump in. The links in the Discord. The links uh, sent on the Patreon, so you can jump in and uh, hang out with Crossfire, man. You can do that. Uh, foot football cis war. I don't football want is war. Oh, I thought he was saying cis, like you know, cis gender or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what's going on these days. He go. Football is war. I like that. Thank you for the uh, clarification. I don't want divas fighting. I want warriors that fight with and for each other. I could not agree more, Tigo. That's the that's the way I want to see it. And look, and with all the drama surrounding the Jets, I have to say, the team hasn't fragmented at all. It's all not these guys, all. right? Whether it's Adrian Amos saying shit or Nicole Hardman saying, dude, the team, you, you got to give it to Salah. He has kept this team together. We, you know, we we complain about the, you know, the concerns of culture, but the culture, it, you know, actions speak louder than words, man. Mm-hmm. And and our team is still uh, very, very much held together, and that's a testament. You know, whatever Ward Sala has, you got to give it to him, man, um, because you know this defense having to deal with this offense for two straight years. You would think people are asking for trades publicly. And outside of the Elijah Moore thing, we're not seeing that. Nope. So um, I think it's a, I think we got a good culture. You can uh, see that like the people team. that come in, you either get assimilated and you become a part of like, like obviously this is going to sound like super like, well, no duh. But like the people who become assimilated all start getting better, you know, who give into the program, who buy into it. You can see that from guys like Tony Adams comes in, assimilates, and, and he starts playing well, Ashton Davis, you know, who comes in, starts playing well, and now is looking to be a starter somewhere else. Uh, Quincy Williams could have made a stink or tried to do something, you know, all of these players who, who come in and who buy in and assimilate to the team and, and follow that mantra do really well. And the players who don't are the players that are like, who is going to give McCall Hardman a contract, right. you know? Like he forced his way out and a lot of things are coming out that are just not great for him and his situation. On a side note, Sheldon Rankins, two years, $26 million is headed to Cincinnati. Say that again. Two years, $26 million deal for Sheldon Rankins headed to Cincinnati. Two years, tw- so thirteen million a year for Sheldon Rankins. Yep, good for him, dude. Well Look done, at, you got uh, paid, man. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, everybody. If you didn't know, went to the Tennessee Titans for double that, uh, twenty three a year. Hmm. I'll tell you what, we were talking about eighteen to twenty being high. Twenty three million dollars a year for Calvin Ridley. We were never in. We were never in that one. I'm going to tell you right now. Nope. Um, and that's kind of look, even though I didn't think it would be that high, I didn't think we were going to be in on, I just knew it was outside of our, of our market. Um, yeah, so that was somewhat of a pipe dream. Uh, Mike, the stat guy checking in, he says starters for Shanu Simpson, Pittman, AVT, 
Morgan Moses, backups, Bakhtiari, Schweitzer, Mahogany, McGovern, Warren, Mitchell. Hmm. I, I, I'll i take that. Because uh, ha- having, uh, having um, you know, uh, uh, Bakhtiari, McGovern, you know, as the kind of vets that in the event, you know, in a pinch, you, you already know what they can bring you. Mahogany, Warren, Mitchell, developmental guy, Schweitzer sucks. Um, but in whatever he's under contract, so he's here. Um, but yeah, man, not a bad group right there, Mike the Stack guy. I uh, keep it up, boys. Love you, Green Bean. Jeremy voice. Jeremy hasn't said he loves me in a long time. As a matter of fact, uh, it's it's quite the opposite. Jeremy's doing everything he can to paint my channel. He spent a half hour last night telling everybody that my lights were distracting. Uh, he's trying to he's trying to start some shit. So when I see Jeremy uh, in New York. I have plans of a figure four leg lock. If you guys don't know what that is, <laughs> that's what just uh, the, tell Jeremy that's what he's in for. The old Greg the Hammer Valentine figure four leg lock, everybody. Uh, so we'll take care of Jeremy. We'll get that guy straight. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Joe the Jet G checking in. If Rodgers retires for VP, are we drafting Bo Nix? Holy shit. Um, you still talking about this? Yeah. I mean, look, uh, let me just say this. This is one of the more jetsy things I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh yeah. I just can't believe that this is even a conversation. Um, but it just slides right into the ridiculousness that, that the jets are uh, like, that it said, keeps getting ridiculous, real. right? First it comes out. Oh, on the short list for VP for an unconsequential presidential candidate. Hey, is, you got to pipe down with that part though. Is football. Come on. Last time a third party got a state was in like 1920 something. It was Teddy Roosevelt running. Um, thank you, V Man, if you guys were watching Matt O'Leary early, earlier. But is a quarterback for the New York Jets. And then it comes out a little bit later, which is just like, oh, he was in Costa Rica doing ayahuasca. He didn't even know this was happening. Like, come on. Yeah. It, this is, it's right. the most Jets line of news. He's going to go be VP. Wait, he didn't know he was going to be VP. He was doing drugs in Costa Rica. Yeah. Like, Jesus, man. Right. And just to be clear, everybody, ayahuasca, you know, it's a very misunderstood uh, thing that a lot of recovery programs are built around these days. Yep. Uh, so, um, you know, before you throw your judgments out there toward a very, very potent spiritual connector, um, you should do some research about it, everyone. It's not like he's on the street smoking crack. That is not um, what I was trying to imply. No, no, no. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not insinuating you are, but it just led me to, I get in these conversations all the time. There are consistent comments that mention Aaron Rodgers as being a drug addict. And uh, it's very, very different. Believe me. We have a couple. Of, I know. We have a couple of retreats here in, uh, here in Florida for that stuff. Damn right. You do. Orlando's packed with them down in Miami. Uh, there's a few. I know yeah. plenty of people, man. Believe me when I tell you, dude, I'm, I'm in that world. You know, whether it's Ibogaine, Ayahuasca, I know, I mean, I'm in that world. That's where I, I was, a, you know, I worked at a detox in Miami for six years. I ran programs in Fort Lauderdale and Pompano Beach for another 10 years. So it's like, uh, you know, I know I'm, I'm in it. I know the difference between crystal methamphetamine and, uh, and Ayahuasca or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't get too worried, Joe the G. And Bo Nix, I would break my own legs if that's what we ended up with. Uh, I would be terrified. Phil, as of right now, Jets are still picking O line at ten or wide receiver. Well, look, let's let's get to that. Um, Was our next? Topic I see anyway. you, Alan. I'll I'll get to you in a minute. I want to just let's continue quickly. I want to break into the Morgan Moses side of this, and then and then we'll talk about how it impacts our draft. Okay, uh, Tigo, if you don't mind. Of course. Um, so Morgan Moses is back, everybody. Joe Douglas out of nowhere. Goes and gets a guy that uh, eh, maybe we shouldn't have let go in the first place. I understand nope. why he did at the time. I still Remember, didn't we like didn't him. let him go. He left. We wanted him back. Mm. He left, but because he only because we couldn't guarantee him the starter position. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, see him what he did for us. You know, all year staying healthy, the whole thing. Just saying, you know what, you're our guy, and we're gonna stop playing games. We didn't do that. And and I understand, again, why we didn't at the time. But uh, anyway, he's back. Joe Douglas swaps 
fourth round picks with the Ravens and then throws them the sixth round pick. I'm not sure if it, no, it's, it's our sixth round pick. It's not the comp pick, I believe. No, no, no. It's um, the comp pick. I believe it is the comp pick. All it right. Even comp. better, even better. So we look one of these three comp picks we got, we essentially traded it for Morgan Moses, whose contract, everybody, if you're not aware, is $5.5 million. Who thought we were going to go out and get a right tackle starting caliber for $5.5 million? Even Jermaine Illuminor, who, uh, who I wanted uh, and got the numbers that I thought was in the $7 million range. So we got a deal. Tigo, how do you feel about this? You know, did Joe Douglas sort of admitting a mistake here? Is it a good move? Is he too old? What's going on here? I, th I think this is a great move. If you would have told me that Morgan Moses was available for trade, that I would have been all in on that move all off season. Go get Morgan Moses. I would have been all in on it. Because like when you're talking about a guy who he came to New York and he played here on his press conference out, talked about how he loved the organization, loved the building and loved the people that were in here. And then went to Baltimore and was didn't just play at the same level, but got better both years that he was in there. I love, love the Morgan Moses trade, especially because it cost us nothing. You're hoping that a sixth round pick is going to make the roster, let alone that a sixth round pick is going to get you a starting right tackle. And again, Put a massive amount of salt on this because we all know about PFF, but Morgan Moses graded as the 10th best tackle, not right tackle, tackle in all of football last year of all of the guys that they graded at the tackle position. So take that for whatever it is that you want to take that for, but bringing Morgan Moses back is a really, really good look it's a good move but i think it also and i think this is one of the reasons why i'm so excited for it is it lines up at least in my mind with the carter warren as your starting right tackle timeline you don't want carter warren starting this year the way that you do that is to get players that play 17 games at tackle and morgan moses does that and that lets a guy like Carter Warren, who I'm still very, very high on, and I still believe in a, a great deal, can learn and develop for another year. And then not next year, but the year after, right? When Morgan Moses leaves, because it's a one-year, $5.5 million deal, essentially. Now you say, okay, Warren, this is your job to lose. You're the right tackle. We're going to bring in some competition, but it's your job to lose. So I love the move. I love the trade. I love the pick. And I love how... It's a move that helps the short term and addresses the long term, in my opinion. Yeah, I could not agree more. I uh, I threw a poll out there for you guys. Give us a quick grade on the Morgan Moses trade. Uh, you know, again, this wasn't a guy that we had on our radar because he wasn't on the market. Joe Douglas did the thing that we call creating the market. Uh, he created his own market here. He saw what was going on out there, and he and he knocked on some doors, and he he found a solution that wasn't readily available uh, or no one was talking about him being available either. Wasn't one of those guys. We hear about T Higgins being available. You hear about Keenan Allen potentially being George, Justin Jefferson. We didn't hear anything about Morgan Moses. So the fact that Joe Douglas went down there and scooped him up was somewhat of a surprise to most. And I think it's a solid move as well. I mean, look, I really liked Morgan Moses here. It's an interesting thing too, because remember that first game, in 2021, we had Becton at left tackle. We did not commit to the right tackle uh, until the, the day of the game in Carolina, and they chose Fant over Moses. So Moses was actually our backup right tackle at the time. Becton goes down, Fant kicks over to left, has that career year, and Morgan Moses started. So we had Fant and Moses at the, at the bookends. And they did a fantastic job for us. So uh, getting him back, uh, I think, you know, is a positive thing because he had nothing but positive things to say about the Jets and the organization when he was here. Again, he left because he wanted to be a starter. And, he, and he's had some fun down there in Baltimore. Hopefully coming back here, blocking for Aaron Rodgers can help keep him upright and we can have some fun uh, in New York as well because shit, man, um, offensive line has been one of our issues. So uh, I, I love it. I love it. I want to see what you guys in the chat think. I'll leave that up there for a minute. I want to get to uh, to Alan's super chat here. Aaron Rodgers is playing 4D chess 
Once he's officially a VP candidate, the Secret Service will never let him get sacked again. License to kill. Right. And maybe snipers in the snipers in the rafters, lasers coming down. <laughs> you try to come sack him, just pa, and you just drop. Yeah. There he is. So, uh, right. And maybe he could say, hey, look, you know, uh, we want grass. I'm tired of this. Terry could get all sorts of shit done. He could tell the NFL that the Jets get uh, extra comp picks. I know it's a sixth round grade. We want a third. And we, he can get things done uh, for the Jets. That'll be nice. I like that, that, that uh, mindset, Alan. Uh, not a bad way to look at it. Uh, real quick, Can't Steve offer to send Woody back to London on the government's dime. He enjoyed his time over in London. That's right. And then we can get Christopher Johnson back. He's done great things. No, no, no. Christopher uh, Johnson is going. Christopher Johnson gave us Adam Gase and the and the uniforms. That's what. That's his legacy. Oh my God! What a terrible. He, he did get Joe Douglas. So depending on how you're feeling about him, right? I now, don't know. Adam Gase be got a positive. <laughs> So by proxy, yeah, you're right. I mean, he he did, and that look, the uh, returns are still questionable. But uh, look, our team is significantly better uh, than it than it was. I don't think that can be debated. You know, look at the last ten years, even even more so, fifteen years. The outside of 2015, we've been a laughable franchise. And Joe Douglas, even though our quarterback situation has been abysmal uh you know I, I don't think there can be any debate that this team we were good enough to lure aaron Rodgers, so he's not going to the jets of 2018 he's not doing it you know what i mean so that's a big uh testament uh steve larson we're talking about christian mahogany at a boston college take a look he's a a, a very strong uh interior prospect so i think you'll like him if you if you just take um take a little look see do some uh breakdown uh research there's lots of YouTube channels out there. Two minute drills, a good one. Uh, just go out there, check them out and see what other people think. And uh, I think you'll like them. Yeah. Um, so uh, where was I here? Oh, the poll. That's what it was. Hold on. Let me end the poll. See what you guys think of the Morgan Moses signing. Where are we? All right. 64% said a 30% said it's a B uh 4% with a with a C and 0% not even Modine voted for an F uh on this one. So I think it's a pretty damn good uh signing. Look at this Crossfire saying George Fant signed a 3 year 1.6 million dollar contract with the, so that's 1.6 a year. It has to be 1.6. I mean it can't be less. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, I mean I, that sounds straight. Isn't the vet minimum higher than that? Yeah, I think it's higher. No, vet minimum. Yeah, vet minimum is higher than that. Yeah, and it's going up to two point one, I think, if it hasn't already, uh, for this year. But uh, either way, wow, George Fant back in Seattle. Is that accurate, Tigo? Yeah, he that I know for a fact. He did go back to Seattle. Interesting. It's a one year deal. A one year deal for how much? Uh, Crossfire saying, if you haven't already joined Green Beans Discord, that's the Beanbaggers. Uh, great bunch of guys, except Harry. Harry yells at me all the time. <laughs> uh, LOL, Harry's awesome. Yeah, I know Harry's the best. I, I, it's not a one-year deal. What did he do? I can't find his contract. I Interesting. Don't, I can't find uh, it. Sam but that seems wrong because the vet minimum is more than that. Yeah. What is the vet minimum this year? I believe and it's 1.9. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, right, that's right in the. I, I thought it was something like that. Uh, Sam Aiken checking in. Would you view the Bo Nix Pro Day attendance as creating interest for the 10th pick? Uh, well, what, what's your take on the uh, the highly attended Pro Day uh, out there in Oregon, uh, Tigo? What are, what, are, what are your thoughts? Oregon State was the day before. Everyone was there watching Fuaga. And then Troy Franklin is also a bottom of the first wide receiver. So we were watching him. Bo Nix just so happened to be the quarterback of Oregon. Like, why isn't anyone saying, oh, the Jets went to Oregon State to watch DJ Uwangalele or whatever his name is? You know, like, it's like, guys, there are other players at the pro day. It's not just the quarterback. You're allowed to scout other players. Are we forgetting that the actual player that's probably going to go in the first round out of Oregon is not Bo Nix, but Jackson Powers Johnson, a player that we could use? You know, you could definitely draft a JPJ or, you know, 
Bo Nix's favorite target in Troy Franklin, who is like might go in the first round or if we get a second round pick. There's a there's a guy that you can target like again. Right. Let's relax. Not every play, not every team is going there to watch the quarterback. There are some teams definitely that went there to go watch Bo Nix. And while you're there, yeah. of course, you get to see him. But right. And while you're there, elsewhere. hey, yeah, why not? It's like, right, you know, you're at the movies, you're waiting at the double feature, you're waiting for the way well, you watch the other one too. You know, it's it's on. It's, it's on. on. You might as you well. Want. It's like, what are you gonna do? You're it's like, like it's it's the when you go to it's when you go to LSU, you might as well also go to Louisiana, right? The the Raging Cajuns. It's the same kind of thing. Oh, you're already at LSU. So you might as well, the, the pro day is probably the very next day. You might as well go there. It's the same kind of thing. It's just you're going to go watch Talise Fuaga and hey, JPJ, Troy Franklin, Brandon right. Doralis. These are guys that we might be interested in. Maybe there's some cornerback no one's ever heard of in the sixth round that they're interested in. Who knows? That's right. That's exactly right. So, but I don't know, Sam. I mean, the, the interest in the 10th pick, I think, is going to be based on other teams um, and what they see. But I, I'm telling you, I look at the 10th pick as a sweet spot, depending on what happens before it. Uh, they're talking about five quarterbacks going now in the, in the top 10. Hey, I don't know. I look at the 10th pick as a sweet spot for somebody willing to trade up for a quarterback. But we'll see how it goes. And that will lead us, uh, Tigo. We have a few minutes left here. How do you think these free agent signings impact the 10th overall pick? There's lots of talk. You know, we've been talking offensive tackle, offensive tackle. There's been a somewhat smaller chorus of, uh, you know, uh, the wide receiver bunch. You know, if Odunze's there or or neighbors, who's not going to? But if he happens to slide to 10, do you override the tackle to take, you know, a, a wide receiver? But here we are. We brought in Simpson at left guard. We brought in Moses at right tackle. We still got ABT and Tipman, so we really only need one guy, and we still have lots of choices out there in free agency. So far, how would you think what we've done impacts that 10th overall pick? Are you on the Bowers train? You think that's real? How do you see it? So I have always been a trade out of 10 by any means necessary. Get another third round pick, get another second round pick, and then reevaluate from there. Right. And I have always leaned weapon over offensive linemen just because we have AVT and I would feel more comfortable with AVT at tackle. I would like to see 17 games from AVT and coming off of an Achilles injury. I think his leg will hold up better at tackle. Now for the longest time, I thought that was right tackle. I've said it, you know, Rusty called me out earlier in the, in the program, but I think that the moves that have been made continue to point in the direction of it's in my opinion, it seems like the jets are trying to do everything that they can to make sure that 10 is wide open so that they're not forced to do anything. Right. So that 10 is for sale. Or if in my eyes, the only two players you take at 10, the only two players you take at 10, if there's a trade on the board is Joe Alt and Marvin Harrison Jr. If either one of them makes it. And here's the thing. After Ridley went to Tennessee, Alt's not making it to 10 anymore. That dream is dead. Yeah. Right. It was a dream. It, it, there was validity behind it. Dom, you can stop typing. I know he's already in there typing. You can stop. <laughs> that was a realistic idea that could happen. But they've got they've got their three wide receivers now. They're not going to go and get another wide receiver. Maybe you can be like, oh, they'll go get Brock Bowers. I doubt it. So Joe Walt is, is already looking for real estate in Tennessee. And if Arizona doesn't, if, if Arizona trades out, and it's not for a massive haul, or if they stick and pick at four and they don't take Marvin Harrison, they should sell the franchise and move it. Like just period. Right. Like that's yeah. it. Just sell the franchise, move it. And then we wipe it from all of our memories. Arizona Cardinals never existed because that's just a mismanagement of assets. You How, how does a fan base forgive something like that? You gotta, you gotta march the building with torches. So I would do everything in my power to trade out of 10, uh, I would go as far back as the Bengals at 18. That's where I would feel comfortable. You can convince me 19 or 20, but I don't want to go past that. And then you reevaluate. You see 
What are the tackles on the board? Uh, we mentioned it in the group chat, and, and I'll say it on here. I'm a big fan of trading back from 10 and then drafting Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU. I would love that. So yeah, that would be my draft strategy would be if you could. Yeah, it all depends on what we get too, right? Like if you're sliding back and all you're getting is a fourth, I see no reason to do it. Just, just take your guy. If you're yeah. able to trade back a couple spots and recoup a second, even a high third, Okay, now we're now we're talking about it, but uh, you know it's got to be. You still have to get somebody that you feel is going to impact the team uh, this year, you know. So I mean, look, I wouldn't, you know, look the idea of AVT being penciled in at left tackle, sliding back to you know thirteen to fifteen, and targeting JPJ, uh, and then just you know getting that second and 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 using it on you know whoever's there you know uh, Jordan Morgan if he's there what whoever another tackle that you feel could use uh, a few months you know uh, in the uh, you know in the cooker so to speak you know that's not an unwise thought process either the one thing I am very very curious about is if the Jets are willing to go Bowers at this I mean I love our tight end room and now I'm not going to say we have you know, uh, Kittle or Kels, uh, you know, on our team. But at the same time, I think we are as solid as we've been in a very long time, if not ever, with Conklin, Ruckert, Yaboa, and then you got Kuntz and his, uh, and his athleticism, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a developmental guy. I don't see any reason to mess with that. I mean, again, I, I love tight ends. I happen to love what we're doing with the tight ends. Now, Bowers, you could justify that he's not a tight end, but, I mean, how many 240-pound wide receivers do you see running around? Uh, so he, he is a tight end, he, you know. So I, I just don't know. I don't I don't know about that. Um, and I'd be slightly concerned. I'd be excited, but I'd be concerned. I'd be a little bit leery of that one. Uh, I like Bowers. Here, look, I like, I like Bowers too. a lot, just not at 10. I think yeah. the, value of tr the value of selling 10 – to me is worth more than the player that we could take at 10. The gap from the player we could take at 10 versus at 14, 15, 16 is not as big as the second round pick or the third round pick that we would get because that's the, yeah. the bread and butter of this draft is in the second and the third round. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Abbott 03 checking in. Thank you, my friend. He says, I hope, uh, quarterback slides to 10. Then we can call the Vikings, Raiders, and Broncos and figure out who wants to jump the others for their quarterback uh, for a second and Sutton. Uh, well, only one team has Sutton. <laughs> uh, let's call the Raiders and see if they want to trade Sutton. So uh, you, 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 Three that's called deal. a tell. That's called a tell, Abbott. You showed your cards. But yeah, I mean, I think that's the move. You know, like if, if there's a, a quarterback at 10, and teams like the Raiders, who gave Minshew very, very good money, but it's not necessarily starter money. That's very high-level backup money. Sometimes you got to pay that to get the, you know, if you perceive him as the top uh, number two quarterback, uh, it, you know, out there on the market right now, paying a couple dollars more for him makes sense. Especially you look, the rookie comes in, you got to you, you got to beat out Minshew. That's your first task. And if yep. you can't, then you feel pretty good about Minshew starting the first six games, whatever it might be. I think that makes a lot of sense. Seattle is another one. Um, well, no, no, I'm sorry, not Seattle. Uh, the Vikings are the one, even though they got Sam Darnold, everybody talking now, oh, Sam Darnold's going to do great up there. I don't, I mean, maybe, but I don't see any data to support that. Uh, you know, I, I just don't Justin understand. Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the NFL. That's the only supporting That's thing That's all they that you can well, say, in my opinion. Yeah. Hey, and Addison is one hell of a wide receiver. I'll give him credit. Yeah, there. I like him too. But, but, but still, Sam, had, look, look, Sam had McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall, chosen one. He had, he, he didn't have slouches uh, no, down no, there no. in Carolina. And, and he was so good that he got his offensive coordinator fired after year one and Matt Rule fired after year two. So, uh, you know, I mean, then he went to Shanahan. He, Played okay, but came in, fumbled, blew the game. I mean, that's fucking Sammy boy. That's what he does. Uh, I don't know. I think he they signed him to be the backup. I don't have any question about that. They signed him um, so that they could go get JJ and tell JJ to beat him out. Mm -hmm. Minnesota's coming Same up thing. hard and Same aggressive. Thing. Yeah. Same thing. So, uh, yeah, hey. So there it is, everybody. Um, we have uh, – a lot to do. We have a lot to look. A lot of fun stuff's happened, you know, and don't forget. Oh, what's that? What did I just do there? What the hell happened? There we go. Uh, we have 
we're getting into that period of time where Joe Douglas likes to wake up from his snap and, and start making some moves. So any minute now we might find out that we have a Tyler Boyd or a Curtis Samuel or a, or a Tyron Smith or a Bakhtiari. Who knows? Uh, anything can happen. But uh, I think our general manager is making moves, maybe not in the urgent way that we crave, but it's happening. And, you know, last thing I'll say, and we got to get out of here, is the defensive tackle market now is picking up, and Joe Douglas already got his. So maybe there's some wisdom in this. He saw the the hold on the offensive side, said, you know what, I'm going to go get this done before that happens, and now everybody's clamoring, and he's already got Kinlaw and Leaky Laku uh, coming in here. Uh, so, hey, maybe there's some wisdom there, too. A little bit of an overpay, of course, on Kinlaw. Yeah, but, uh, hey, who guy. knows? Well, I mean, who knows, though, too? You know, uh, Sala getting reunited with him, former first-round pick, had some injuries, had a good year last year. Maybe he's on the upswing, and and, and we get a value, uh, and, and the $7 million looks like a steal. Who knows? But with that said, Tigo, that's the end of our show, buddy. Uh, why don't you let everybody know if you got anything coming up that you want to know that you want them to know about? Yeah, no, nothing really. I am currently doing my, like I said, I'm doing my deep dive on John Simpson just because I'm curious who's this new jet and, and all of that stuff. So there is a video coming on that soon, and I'm going to try to do videos on all of the other guys. Um, but I'm going to try to focus on the big guys. And yeah, now we're starting to see, you know, what is this free agency going to look like? What is the draft going to look like? And we're really getting into the meat and potatoes of, of what's going on. Everything before was just starters, you know, and just that bread and oil that they leave at the table that no one really wants to eat, but you eat way too much of. So then you don't eat your food. Mm, I could eat my whole dinner. Yeah, in olive I do it a lot, bread, buddy. I do it <laughs> so much. It's a problem. It is a problem. All right. All right, guys, listen, we love you. Uh, let's keep this going. Uh, stay, uh, stay focused. We're going to get some more moves. Uh, the next day, two days, three days, and going through free agency into the draft. It's going to be this, you know, an, an exciting time. Slow and steady wins the race, and uh, we're doing just that. So for Tigo and the entire Talking Jets team, I will bid you adieu. We will see you next time, everybody.